Hi everyone, so this webinar is on the rock cycle. So firstly we're going to look at rocks are classified as igneous sedimentary or metamorphic. So firstly we need to classify uh, rocks as to their type of formation. So a rock is defined as any solid naturally occurring part of the Earth's crust. Now igneous rocks are defined through their formation as the formation of a rock when hot molten rock, which we know as magma, cools and solidifies. Now sedimentary rocks through their classification and formation are formed by the sedimentation of fragments that have been weathered from older rocks. Sedimentary rocks are also formed from the remains of living organisms as well. So limestone, for example, is an example of uh, a rock that has formed from living organisms and, so, and coal is another one as well. Now, metamorphic rocks are defined by their formation, which is through the action of heat and pressure uh, to on existing rocks. So we've got a granite here down the bottom. We've got a nice laid uh, sandstone. We've got some fossiliferous limestone and we've got a nice. Okay, so minerals will form at different temperatures and pressures. But firstly, we need to understand that the Earth is not uniform in its pressure and temperature as you increase depth. So pressure and temperature exerted on rocks will increase with depth. So this increase in temperature with depth is called the geothermal gradient. And it does actually vary throughout the surface of the Earth. So for example, in the Cooper Basin in northeast South Australia, there's a really high geothermal gradient out there. You've got rocks that are reaching temperatures of 300 degrees Celsius with depths of only four or five kilometers, which is huge if we look at our little scale here at four to 500 kilometers depth, which is about, sorry, four to five Ks depth. It should be around roughly around 200, but it's actually 300. Now these hot rocks uh, should be investigated as a source of clean energy because we can use hot rock technology to create energy through steam. Um, and I'm sure that this will be later explored in the course as well. So because of different pressure and temperature conditions, we can then identify where we would likely see minerals associated with rock types of rocks. So sedimentary rocks usually only occur in the upper part of the crust, the very top, under very low temperature and pressure. As we get into higher pressures and temperatures, we go in towards metamorphic processes. And then as we heat over the melting point of minerals, we go into igneous processes. So not all minerals uh, on this table are under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. So clay minerals that we are found in sedimentary rocks are stable under low temperatures and conditions and therefore are near the surface of the earth, like we can see on this diagram. So if these minerals are subjected to very high temperatures and pressures, they change to form other minerals. So clay will change to form biotite and muscovite. And micas are formed under high pressures, therefore we see them in metamorphic rocks. And we also find them in igneous rocks as well. So low minerals equals low temperatures, whereas minerals with high temperatures are metamorphic and igneous rocks. Okay, so here's just a summary table of all the uh, common rock bearing mineral, uh, mineral bearing, sorry, common minerals that you guys need to know. So quartz, because it has a wide range of conditions, it's found in all rock types. Feldspars, biotite, muscovite, and hornblende all form under high temperature and pressure conditions. Therefore, they're only found in igneous and metamorphic rocks. Olivine forms under very high pressure and temperature conditions, and therefore is only found in igneous rocks. Calcite has a wide range of temperatures and pressures. Uh, because it can recrystallize and therefore is found in both sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. But clay minerals like kaolinite, for example, have low temperatures and pressures and are therefore found in sedimentary rocks. So you should now be able to describe in general terms the formation of igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. So we need to now understand that rocks are in a constant process of change. So this is the rock cycle. You've probably already seen this before. Um, in a more simplified version. 
So new mountain ranges are pushed up through tectonic forces and the old ones erode, uh, weather and erode away. Temperature and pressure conditions acting on rocks within the Earth's crust gradually change and new minerals are formed, whether that be through burial or uplift, whether that be through chemical weathering or physical weathering. And so rocks are continually being recycled. So you need to be really familiar with this. If we start off with magma here, we can move into crystallization of an igneous rock. Now that igneous rock can either part off into a sedimentary rock or it can go back to being a magma or it can go into being a metamorphic rock. So, and if we go on to a sedimentary rock, a sedimentary rock can then turn into a magma or it can turn into a metamorphic rock. So this whole rocks are always being recycled that you can have one type of rock turn into another type of rock. Um, and that process is very much, uh, very much branching in all areas. So you should now be able to relate specific temperature and pressure conditions that occur in different parts of the Earth's crust to mineral changes. And you should be able to use a simple diagram to explain how processes and minerals interact to make up the rock cycle.